Hello, CPTI students. It's our lecture 14. Uh, let's pray. <laughs> Lord God, we thank you uh, as we uh, wrap up our YouTube uh, lecture series on Kap Benur. Give us inspiration that we may learn something that you will help uh, Cambodia in a profound way, Lord God. Thank you in advance for what you do, Lord God, through us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to share a screen. Okay. Lecture 14. Are you ready? Taksu. Well, last lecture, we talked about Korean patron is rice pots by Cambodian pastors. And we try to figure out how then we can work together. There's a lot of misunderstanding from the Western missionaries. The whole concept of patron client is misunderstood. Kapenur is misunderstood. Then how can we all bring it together? So they could really help uh, Cambodian churches. That was a big bubble rice pot. <laughs> you know, I realized that um, when they were talking about this uh, uh, Cambodian pastor, yeah, these uh, stupid sponsors, they just buy us meals and put us in the nice hotel and all that. I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm just doing this meeting and I'm treating them a nice meal at the hotel. And, and I realized I was just big, bubble, stupid rice pot to some of these pastors. And well, <laughs> what can I do? So I learned. You see, uh, I even did an angel tour 2007, like 29, uh, 29 uh, states. Okay, let me go back. So, Uh, there should be a video, but I guess it's too much, so it's not working. So just let me explain that. Well, Angel Tour 2007, I spent 29 days through a motorcycle ride. I mean, risked my life really, it was very, very difficult. I raised 140,000 for Cambodia, sending Cambodian pastors kids to college. Uh, it was really well intentioned, and, and I, I, don't, I don't regret it. It was a great, great work and uh, documentaries were made. And so I had a really good time. Um, became uh, eight documentaries. I, at the time I had a foundation called Vision to Reality Foundation. So, and then I did a wolf project, war on leprosy and poverty, raised total of close to half million dollars and building buildings and oh my goodness, and all that people came and Medical clinic was built at this is Kampong Cham area. Bible college was done. And I mean, it was amazing, but it cost so much money. And I asked myself, how, how can we do work without money? Is it possible to do mission work in Cambodia without money, right? So I asked the research question, what is the problem with my work so far? You need to ask yourself, Mata Hoshef, <laughs> what's going on? Can I continue like this? Do I need to raise a million dollars next year? Do I need to raise $2 million next year to cut it cut with all these buildings and programs? And I said, something's not right. Right? So I did my PhD research in all these locations, going to Mondorki, Siem Reap, Bentemenche, Batambang. I mean, I'm traveling, learning. Kokong, well, Kokong's not there, but I even went to Kokong. So I pretty much other than over there, Ratanakiri, I, I've been to. And then I invited all the researchers, Korean missionary researchers from Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, to Phnom Penh. And I got, once again, I'm the big rice pot. I booked a nice resort. French resort in Phnom Penh. 
and invited them and were talking, were sharing, sharing papers, invited Pastor Tang Bek Hong here. And he's the founder of Glowlink in Phnom Penh and all these missionaries from Vietnam. Oh, this is your professor, I think. And we uh, published a book, the Church Planting, a Financially Independent Church in Indochina or Southeast Asia, five countries. It was pretty extensive. I was very happy. And then we invited my academic mentor, Bill Privet, here. And then, oh, look, I look so young here. And all these scholars, and he's now doing PhD. You know, I think he's one of your professor. He was a professor now. He has a large church in America. But we just kept on. We organized a big meeting too. And then, of course, we published more books about how can we then plant financially independent churches. We organized the RRC. What I'm doing right now is as a member of Cambodia Research and Resource Center. I believe in research. I believe in working together. I'm not smart enough to do it on my own. So I'm organized, utilized, work together, build a... It's been seven and a half years already. Now we're praying right now to launch another phase of RCRRC. We need to buy a building. So we need to raise now $400,000 so we could buy another building. <laughs> right? So... In midst of all that research and learning by mistake, learning through experience, I realized one thing, wait a minute. This school, CBC, not a real name, went through three distinctive phases. I observed that the role that Ted and the CBC pastor played actually changed according to each distinctive stages. First, during the mission house stage, Ted, not his real name, play the role of a father. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Patron, cop, is playing a role of father. That's very interesting, right? Because the first during 1998 to 2000 period, CBS was not a formal organization, but consists of community of Ted's family and seven boys, all living in the Ted's house. You know, Ted and his wife, two boys, and then seven other boys live in his flat. However, so guess what? 1998 to 2002, in my thesis, in my PhD thesis, I call it mission house stage. Like he didn't call it, I called it. I observed it, I described it, and I said, you know what? You went through distinctively different stages through your mission. First is that when you and your family and seven boys live in that almost like an orphanage setting where you live with them, eat with them, you know, and then start doing daily Bible studies with them. That is called mission house stage. During that time, you became spiritual father because I did a qualitative research. Remember, ID quality, inductive, database, qualitative research. And while I was doing my qualitative interview, the terms like parents, spiritual father, father, aboji, kumo, yonge aboji, all start coming up from the interviews that I was having. I said, that's so interesting. And then I, the key finding is that although social studies currently express patron client dining primarily in material and political terms, in case between founder and CBC pastor initial assessment, the patron and father were observed. That's the key finding in my research. This is a term that I came up with, Kapener, I came up with. That's what you need to do with your own research. You have to come up with your research. So is this correct observation? Is this CPTI church planting different? If so, how and why? Mata Hoshe. I don't want you to agree with me. That was my inductive database, qualitative findings. You must say something different. I disagree. I don't think that's correct. Or I agree. Why? Because CPTI churches 
if it was done right, the CPTI pastors live also and build a community where CPTI pastors, when church is small, whatever, they really play the role of father. Or you could say that, well, pastor in Cambodia act like father anyways. Or, well, unlike other countries, pastors in Cambodia are not respected because they're not really educated. They're not really a community leader. Um, I don't know how, you know, because I heard both sides. I heard from Cambodian young people who said, I don't respect our pa pastors because they're not educated. They're not very smart. They don't have money and they're not really a community leader. Really? Because pastors, at least in America, you know, has to graduate from college, has to get master level degree and, and respected leaders in the community. How come Cambodia? And so then you have to argue. We have to talk, you have to debate research your thesis is basically and what? Yes, starts with A, what? Argument, not the whole chef. Tell me, please, what do you think? Then came the second phase from 2003, 2007, which CBC became formal school, primarily resulting from increase of numbers. <sighs> Slow down, Bob. And the need for more formal teaching. Had bought a large piece of land sponsored by one Singaporean church, his, his patron, on the outskirts of the city, and started building dormitory classroom. Wow. Then, by personal referral and mission house phase, students and other Korean missionaries, student body grew to be more than 100, right? And classes were more organized. Bible teachers from Singapore, Korea, the Philippines, and other neighbor countries start coming to teach there. So, he went through early. CBC, Cambodia Bible College, not real name, stage from 2003 to 2007. That's my research finding. I'm imposing that description on them. After my PhD, I talked with Ted. He said, you're right. <laughs> so I said, hey. So now he moved from patron as father to patron as sponsor. There's a distinctive role. And that's what I'm observing. There's a three distinctive roles, one as a father, then one as a sponsor, and then one as a partner, okay? Finally, during 2008, 2015 period, the third and final established all the missions, housing students, some of them were helped formalized. Oh, there's an E missing. In the meantime, well, I wonder if that's the truth. That would be a really interesting finding, page 16. Finally, during 2000 stage, in the meantime, oh, right here, in the THE, so there is a mistake there. I, I, I must have push something. But anyways, in the meantime, they are going to what? Right? They're going to the partner relationship. And that's what I'm going to pick up. I feel kind of pressured for time because I only got 15 minutes to finish this, at least chapter two by today. So father and child relationship, the linguist argued that historian influenced by trained in anthropology have considered broker as a starting point, okay? So Ted played the part of the broker, but he has more of a father, right? So Ted shares in his own interview, I spent three to four years with these boys, these guys in the beginning, eating together, more like family than a school. Some guys came to at age 16 and 17 and since they could not graduate in three years. We lived together for four or sometimes four and a half years. We became very close. And in a sense, we built lots of chung. Chung means relationship, feeling for each other. The term chung is translated as affection or attachment, which describe as an intimate relationship between family members, close friends, and lovers, right? Lovers. So he argues, that in case of CVT church planting project, Ted as a broker 
took a role of father temporarily during the mission house stage. He played a critical function connecting both patron and client and both his patron and client accepted him as a such. When functioning as a father, Ted's affection actions were not necessarily or primarily based on hierarchical and or inequality, but on the temporary need of the situation to which he was the regular regulator and circulator of certain values. Example, financial and mission related goals. So what am I saying? Well, what I'm saying is in this particular case, church, CBC church planting, Ted being the patron or cop had to play the role of a father, not because he wanted to be authoritative and try to control because he was accused of doing that. No, it was situational. He had no choice. Okay. So, Mata Hoshep, how is it different than in CPTI church plan? I would like to know if someone could take on the CPTI church plan sample and interview and then compare with CBC, which is different, which is better, which is, you know, which, could, which will produce more financially independent church because the CBT church, they planted 14 churches. None of them are financially independent. So in that way, not overcoming a dependency, it is a failure. So is CPTI different? Can you research your CPTI church and compare so that you can come up with your own version that will be helpful, healthy church plan, right? Recalling his experience during the mission house stage, one Cambodia leader described the role Ted played like this. If we do not have patience, the giving heart and love of God living together would be so difficult. For me, Reverend Ted, I would say, I could say he's like a spiritual father. So they recognize it's Korean missionary they live with. It wasn't a rice pot. Although he was a rice pot providing meals, but they were not cynical. They were not making fun. They were not laughing at Ted. No, he was my spiritual father. Someone who lived together through CBC's missional stage explained, for me, Ted is my best teacher. And also the teacher, he teaches me everything. Yes, he helped me to know God and he's like my real father because he did not have father. He got kicked out of his own Kamai family. He lived with them because he accepted him. Ted met him on the street. They met this beggar boy on the street and said, you come live with me. Amazing story. And, and to think that some Cambodian pastor think Korean missionaries are just a rice pot really hurts me. It hurts me. One of the Cambodian staff who joined the CBC at the early stage expressed the role of a father Ted played in her life, stating, because at the time I was very young, some teachers didn't want to take me in. But Reverend Ted, he's like really kind and he still gives me the chance to learn English at CBC. So what happened is that uh, she wanted to join the school, but everybody, the school regulation said, no, no, she's too young. So what does Ted do? It's okay, just come live with us. And you don't have to even formally join the school, but it's okay, just come learn English. And at, you know, when you get older, then you could formally join. So using that way, she graduated from CBD and married a man from CBD, CBC. And now they have a thriving church, thriving church. That's, it will be the first church they become uh, financially independent because he and his wife, I mean wife, and she and her husband preach the gospel, passionate about gospel, love Jesus. And, and they said, we will not depend on missionaries. You know, and, and, and the, the stuff they share is, how long can a baby suck on mother? What, until they are 35? <laughs> I don't want to suck on mother's breast until I'm 35, it's sick. <laughs> I want to become independent. I don't want to suck mother's milk anymore. I'm like, wow, that's good. I'm rooting for you. I'm fighting. Yes, you could do it. Now the challenge is how do you become partner to partner, right? How do you become a rice pot yourself to someone? In the third stage, Ted attempted to transition from his role as a FOB first order broker to the role of partner. Relevant to his topic, 
Silverman, in her historical account of Central Italy, showed how certain patrons came to dominate in a wide range of mediating function between rural communities. After World War II, many of these functions were taken over by the state as the expansion of literacy, education allowed for locals to engage directly with bureaucracy. In the context of CBD, CBC, Ted's role as a broker emerged in its early stage of development and it's at this point. His goal to transition from FOB as a sponsor to a partner. That's where he is right now. He hasn't transitioned out. Matter of fact, a lot of his pastors, a lot of his clients are saying that we want to become partner, but you cannot become a partner until you become independent. As long as you receive money from your patron, don't say that I want to be a partner. Why, why, would, why would they give you permission to become a partner when you live your life on their salary? If, if they give you money, right? I mean, okay, so you join the company. Let's say you go to Elon Musk. Elmore too, it was just there, right? And you work, let's say a shoe store, okay? Wow, and you start working, they pay you, oh, let's say, you know, you became a great salesman there, they pay you 150 a month, okay? And then you go to the owner and say, listen, I wanna become your partner. What would your Cambodian owner say? My, my partner, you're my worker. I give you 150 a month. Why would I call you partner? Right? You're not a partner, you're just a worker. And then the, the owner of the, because you did so well, oh, you're selling, now you're making $10,000 for the company, the store. And then they said, the owner said, you know what? Why don't we start another store like this at Elmore 3. Remember, Elmore 3 is coming, come on, pay. I'll open up this store like that to Elmore 3 and you run it. Okay, great, right? Then you work, you, you, you still take salary. Now he's giving you $5,000 a month to run the store. So now you own, now you work for the, this company, your own store and you're making, you're taking salary of 5,000 a month. That's great. Until, you say that I don't need your money. I want to be a partner. And then the partner said, okay, Elmo 4 is coming to Kampong Chang. And in order to start a store, we need $100,000 investment. Can you come up with $100,000? Yes, I could recruit money, 100,000. Then you are a partner. That's how it works, right? So when a Cambodian pastor says, I want to be a partner, but and then I ask, Who's giving you salary? Well, you know, Ted gives me salary, $300 a month. But then don't, don't want to be a partner. He will not, you will never be a partner. Unless you become independent of the finance, there is no partnership. Simple as that. In the worlds like that, in spiritual world, same thing, right? So, However, some CBC graduates expressed their frustration at Tetro as partner, pointing at his micromanagement, unwillingness to share responsibility, making decisions for CBC. Several CBC pastors spoke openly against some of the Korean missionaries as being manipulated, saying their primary commitment was to maximize their gains. Those CBC pastors deemed them unworthy, trustworthy. According to Linguist, if manipulation rather than resolution of conflicts was the central broker skill, it was not surprising that he was often despised and considered dishonest. Wow. So obviously Ted has a lot of hurdle, a lot of problems overcome. Because some of these pastors were very upset. Like, how come he does he makes decisions on his own? Like, well, because you don't contribute. You know, how come he makes a decision? Well, because he gets the money from Korea and the Korean church is telling him what to do. He really doesn't have any choice. But you see, now the CBC graduates are now reaching their 40s, 45. Some of them are late 40s and saying that we want to share the responsibility of making a decision. Well then, become independent. Don't receive money from that. 
then you could be a partner. So it works both ways. Ted has to learn to give it up. The client has to step up the plate. And he also expressed that he had attempted to become the partner with certain CBC pastor and succeeded in a few cases. However, I found out that those pastor had different understanding of what partnership should look like. Ted stated, Ted state stated, talk of partnership is recent thing since we did not even have the concept of partnership at the beginning. Eventually, Ted realized that he had to go to a partnership model because there was too much financial burden on me, continuous. After a certain period, they had to learn to run the church independently. At the same time, he felt that generally most CBC church were immature. Even my patrons advised me to caution with partnership. What? The patron, the Korean or Singaporean church that giving money said, no, 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 these people are not mature. And my interview with them also is not mature. They don't want to be responsible. They just want authority, right? One case, Ted bought a large land for church, built a brand new building. I mean, all the material came from Korea. I mean, my goodness. And when I go interview the pastor, he's just sitting there. You know, we had a, a, a interview appointment and when I arrived there, he was taking a nap. During the day, I said, what do you do here? I run a church. I said, wow, this is such a huge land. Why don't you put mango tree or do something? He said, nah, the cows come and eat it all. I'm like, well, why don't you put a fence? <laughs> yeah, you know, we don't have money for fence. Well, why don't you raise money for fence? You know, honestly, I'm thinking, man, if I'm in his situation, man, I would turn that into a oasis. I got all this land, you know, I got just put a fence, man. Put a stupid mango tree there <laughs> or something. Well, you know, nobody cares for me. No, 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 I'm complaining, complaining. And how old are you? You just want to be partner? Yeah, I want to make decision with Ted and you know, make decision. Why would he make, why would he give you that authority when you cannot even run this thing. I mean, right? Oh. Everybody wants independence. Ted claimed that few CBC church were in partnership with him personally and with CBT as an organization. This church in this location is like our partner, but Right, but everybody felt different. So how do you de become a partner? How does CB CPTI church plan look like? Is there any partnership? Does any CPTI church, the CPTI plant that now is doing so well, giving $1,000, $10,000 to CPTI in return for thanks, right? That's what Vietnamese churches are doing. There are 250 churches in Vietnam Right? When we studied that 15 years ago, there were 10 years ago, in that little thing that we did, they have 250 churches that their denomination planted, now pays their pastor full-time salary and 10% their entire income. If the church makes 20,000 a year, then they give 2,000 offering to their denomination, to their CPTI, kind of. Is their church like that in CPTI? Well, they, are. they have 250 partners already. Why not in Cambodia? Right? That's my research question to you, because I'm not Khmer. I don't know what's going on in the minds of Cambodian pastors. I don't know what's going on at CPTI church planters. I've studied different denominations, different groups. It's not CPTI, it's not Presbyterian denomination. And in that denomination, or in that little group of, I don't know, 14, 15 churches, the young pastor who's been there for 15, 20 years, full salary for 20 years, still complain. Well, how come I'm not a partner? How come, you know, Ted decide everything on his own? We should make decision together. I'm like, okay. What, Mata Hoshet, what do you think? Right? Is this correct observation? 
Is CPTI church plan different? If so, how? Tell me why. Tell me why in your paper. That'll be your paper, by the way. Compare cop and earth principle with CPTI church. Do you have any question? Do you have any answer? Please, I would like to know. Because this concludes my YouTube lecture. That's it. And then everything else will be Zoom. And I'll be talking to you in person. So please, every three lecture, so YouTube lecture one to three, we'll cover that in lecture 15. Lecture one and three review through Zoom will be lecture 15. Lecture 16, lecture four through six, review, Zoom, and one page note. And then lecture seven through nine, at 17. Lecture 10 through 12, 18. Lecture 11 through 14, lecture 19, through Zoom. Final Zoom, we're gonna all review together and then come up with this. So every three lectures, you need to write one or two page and that will become part of your 20% of your grade. Okay, 20%. So please do that. So Holy Spirit, God, come inspire us that we'll become, let me see you face to face. So Lord, I just pray that TPTI students will really become an agent of change for Cambodia in the future. In Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. See you next lecture through Zoom. <laughs>